Church of Belize is like a tree that has been watered and nurtured by many religious communities throughout the years. Our diocese is a unique one where most of our parishes are served by missionary communities. One of the communities that has served several parts of the country diligently for over 50 years is the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. In today's feature, we will look at the priest who founded the first salt mission in Belize in Benque Viejo del Carmen and salt's first international mission, Father John McHugh. Hello, with today's feature story, I am Tessa Habet. This feature is brought to you by Brothers Habet Limited. Tired of replacing light bulbs? LEDs are what you need. LEDs last up to 30,000 hours. That's 30 times longer than incandescent bulbs and up to eight times longer than compact fluorescents. So less changing and less trash. Planet Earth thanks you. And the LED experts at Brothers Habet and Habet and Habet will help you find the best LED solution with colors for every room and mood, starting as low as $6.95. You can even get LED strips for home, office, and industrial use. So say goodbye to fluorescent tubes forever. And because they use up to 90% less energy, you save money. Money you can spend on other things. So head to Brothers Habet or Habet and Habet today. You can also call, email, or Facebook us. Have a brilliant day. The Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity has had a tremendous impact on our country, especially for the community in Benque Viejo del Carmen. Just 11 years after SALT was founded, Father John McHugh, a co-founder of SALT, established the first international SALT missions in Benque Viejo, Belize, and Melchor, Guatemala. Father John McHugh was born on August 9, 1923, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. After finishing high school, he enlisted in the U.S. Air Force and was stationed in England during World War II. John Stephen McHugh served in World War II as a lieutenant in the U.S. Army Air Corps. After being shot down, he became a prisoner of war in Germany. Upon returning home, he entered seminary and was ordained a diocesan priest with the Archdiocese of Santa Fe, New Mexico, where he had his first assignment as a priest. New Mexico was to be the cradle of the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, SALT. A couple years after his ordination, he was introduced to Father James Flanagan, who had come to the Archdiocese of Santa Fe as a step in the founding of a new religious congregation. On July 16, 1958, Father Flanagan founded the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, also known as SALT, with Father John McHugh as the first priest member. Father John McHugh came to Benque Viejo del Carmen in November 1969. Benque Viejo would become the first salt mission outside the United States. Father John arrived in Benque Viejo shortly after the closing of the Second Vatican Council in 1965, with the intention of being in Benque for only one year because his mission was at San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas, Mexico. That one year ended up being 30 years in Benque, his hard battleground. The entire church was in transition. The post-conciliar era was beginning. Besides, the Benque parish was living through with the stigma due to the recent death of Father Gregory Sontag in 1961. Father John McHugh found himself before a local church that was literally crushed. When Father John McHugh traversed over Stanton's trail into Benque Viejo del Carmen, 
cradled in the Maya mountains, little did he know that he would rub shoulders with scores of Jesuits who had served Belize's westernmost mission since 1905, when Buck Santon, the famed ethnobotanist priest, served as its first pastor. Father John would go down in history as the longest serving pastor at the mission in the hinterlands, living for 30 years in the same rectory which Stanton had built before he died. As a priest, Father John McHugh was at the forefront of the spirit of John 23rd's Aggiornamento, which urged the church to open its doors to dialogue with the modern world. It was this spirit that led Father John to break cultural barriers and establish the reforms to draw the people closer to the liturgy. It was then that many of us laity were invited to be part of this renewal. I was 16 years old when I was called to spearhead these reforms in the liturgy of Holy Week and Easter in Benke, which gave impetus to popular devotions. Holy Week in Benke Viejo is, as it is now, thanks to the vision of Father McHugh who opened spaces and opportunities to form leaders. Throughout all these years, all who labored closely to Father John entered a pedagogy of the church as people of God. We knew that the liturgy of the hours was not just for the religious, but was an open treasure for all the faithful. We grew to understand that popular devotions like novenas, customs, and prayers have a place within divine worship as an extension of the liturgy. In imitation of the monastic movement in which the life of the people revolves around the liturgical moment of the church. It is very interesting to note that during most of his stay in Benque Viejo, up to the decade of the 90s, with the opening of Our Lady of Mount Carmel High School, Father John never gave an indication of belonging to a religious community. He never entered into the minutiae of marketing, nor did he profess fondness for any such group. The entire community was his ecclesial thing. His parish, his family, Catholics and non-Catholics, natives and migrants, black and white, young and old, sober and the drunk, the children, youth and the elderly, all of us stigmatized by the scars of our own narratives. In the gift of self, Father John was gifted by the people he served. He became the shepherd par excellence, reflecting in his person the paradigms of the Good Shepherd encapsulated in John 10, 14. I am the Good Shepherd, I know my sheep, and they know me. One of the many epiphanies in Father John's priestly life was a realization that he was walking blindly in faith, in the face of the mandate of the Council to guide the laity in the path of holiness, as one of the Church's conciliar document Lumen Gentium exhorts. Although sanctity in the church is the same for all, it does not manifest itself in a unique way. Hence, the insistence that each one is to sanctify himself in the way of life to which he has been called, following Jesus, who is the model of all sanctity. In this pedagogy of life, Father John taught us that obedience does not make us less, but frees us from our ego to hear God's voice more distinctly with the ear of the heart. He gave us an example of simplicity of life, showing us that with less baggage one travels better. Through a testimony of life, Father McHugh taught us how to serve our neighbor without measure making our life a continual
priestly offering. Without a doubt, he embodies the call of the Jesuit Karl Runner to form Christians that are to survive the Holocaust of the modern world and be the mystics of this era. In a society which is plagued by individualism and all sorts of isms that dehumanize the individual. Father John McHugh knew well that a mysticism of love presupposes relationship. The cross of discipleship extends to both ends, God and God's creation. He lived this reality as a pastor with two parishes in the edge of the world, in the valley of the Mopan and the plains of Melchor de Mencos in Guatemala with its numerous villages. I still recall impatiently waiting for him at church on Sundays and hearing the roar of the pickup truck bracing at the steps of the old rectory and seeing him jump out, still robed in his alb coming from Mass in Melchor, a tireless worker as a priest during the Civil War in neighboring Guatemala. Well, how foolish we did question when we thought he was unknowing, but how wisely he did answer with all the prophets showing how the God-man had to suffer and die upon the cross. And only in this manner could he redeem our loss Oh, how our hearts were burning on the road to the mouse. Father John McHugh did not beat his own drums. He danced instead in the plaza to the fife of the master player. In this way, he brought to life Catholic social teaching. Far from living in comfort, he gave an example of how to exercise social justice and how to denounce institutional sin in the world. He taught us one and a thousand times not to be afraid of voicing the truth and telling things the way they were. In a subtle way, he would tell police officers when they visited the church as a police formation, not to kick the dogs, much less drunkards and migrants. In other words, not to abuse of their power. More than once, he pounded his fists on the pulpit to denounce the excesses, not only in the municipal fair, but also in the government. He spoke openly against abortion, contraception, and against any situation that alienated man and woman from his, her, dignity. Father John McHugh was a prophet in the full sense of the world, truly at times a solitary voice that shouted in the desert. Undoubtedly, he was one of the great ones who became less through a witness of faith with a life centered in Jesus Christ. Romantic love, in essence, spins around a person. God, who became one of us in the beloved person of Jesus. Before you go on a trip, he would say, say three Hail Marys for a good journey. In the moment of desperation, when you can't even pray, bring to your lips the sweet names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. On July 31st, we celebrated Father John McHugh's birth to eternal life. More than the confounder of the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, we celebrate a man whose legacy is captured in the words of St. John of the Cross, shedding a thousand graces speedily 
through these roads he passed, and departing only with his figure, left us all in beauty clad. Bendito todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús, Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros ahora y la hora de nuestra muerte. Ah, ah. earthly life in Corpus Christi, Texas, where the Sol Generalette is located. Father John McHugh passed into eternal life on Monday, July 31st, 2017 in Corpus Christi, Texas. He was 93 years old. We give thanks to the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity for all the work that they do in our country, and we pray for their continued zeal and perseverance in their vital mission. Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, pray for us. And that's our story. Thanks for watching. This has been a Guadalupe Media production. For this and more feature stories, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or view on Guadalupe Media Channel 96 on CCV or Channel 64 on CBC. You can also tune in on the radio in your car, home, or office at 101.9 FM, and please be sure to download the Guadalupe Media radio app from Google Play or the App Store. Our Blessed Mother, lead us to Jesus.